Hai, selamat datang. Welcome to Virtual Venture Vacation. Now, my name is Chuan Han. Today, I'm going to bring you to our National Palace. Uh, Malaysia is actually a very, very special country with, with very special uh, condition, very special system of kings. All right. But of course, our country, we are still known as the constitutional monarchy system. Yeah. Meaning to say, our country is still a, a parliamentary country, right? And of course, the, uh, we are ruled under the uh, constitutions and we have the uh, monarchy as well, all right? So our King Palace was actually located in Jalan Tuanku Abdul Halim, all right? Formerly known as the uh, Jalan Duta. Jalan Duta was actually known as the Embassy Road because a lot of embassies are actually located around this area as well, right? So, uh, according to history, of course, this uh, national palace is still very, very new, yeah. Because uh, this national palace was actually uh, started to build uh, in two o o seven and completed in two zero one one. You know, actually, the old uh, the old palace was actually uh, now the museum uh, yeah the, uh, the museum now so uh, this is a new palace now the the whole area of this new palace is actually 96.52 hectares and the build-up area itself is 28 hectares and uh, the government actually spent 800 million ringgit to build the national palace so you can feel itself how big and how majestic is the our national palace so basically the uh, architectural of our uh, national palace is actually uh, based on malay and islamic architecture that's the reason why you can see that uh, those domes are actually uh, yellow in color yeah the yellow depicts royalty is it was because according to history, where during the era of Malacca Sultanate, that is the Sultan Mansur Shah, has visited, has visited uh, this uh, uh, Song Dynasty, and then as a return, right? So the the China King uh, has given to the uh, Malacca Sultan a yellow color dress. So this itself depicts the uh, royalty. So that's the reason why Mal the Malays also through the influence of the Chinese use the yellow color to represent royalty, right? And then uh, the whole palace has 22 domes and the main dome is actually a resemblance of the Zahe Mosque in Kedah. Now, uh, we can't actually go into the uh, National Palace. We can only uh, stop at the uh, main gate or the main entrance of the National Palace only. Yeah. So anyway, how, of course, through my own research, I would like to share with you the uh, exterior and also the interior part of the uh, National Palace. And of course, uh, the whole National Palace, the whole structure is actually divided into two parts. Basically, it's the uh, East Wing. And the East Wing uh, consists of the Balai Rong Seri, which is the very main hall. Then we have the, uh, or base, sorry, uh, not only the hall, or basically the banquet room. Okay. And then we have the uh, Singhasana Kecil, the Singhasana Kerajaan. And from here, uh, the uh, West Wing, we have the uh, King's meeting rooms. We have various types of meeting room. That is the main one is the uh, Dewan Seri Makota, Dewan Seri Negara, and also the Santapan, right? Then over here, I'm sharing with you the whole exterior view of the uh, palace. You can see from here, how beautiful and how unique and majestic is the 
King's Palace. Now, as for the interior view, uh, this is the uh, waiting area. And the, the waiting area itself, from here you can see yeah, how posh or basically it really gave us a very soothing, very comfortable uh, kind of feeling when we are actually in the palace. So uh, this is the uh, waiting room area. Yeah. So the same goes with this one. And then we have this Balai Rong Seri. Now, the Balai Rong Seri is actually used for our king's coronation. Okay? And then it is also used for the uh, confirmation of titles. Ladies and gentlemen, for your information, uh, our king was just like uh, the, the king or queens of England where they confer titles to those Malaysian citizens who have given or basically worked hard to make Malaysia well known. You know? So basically, our uh, king will bestow or confer the titles to the Malaysian citizens. One good example is our former Prime Minister, uh, Dr. Mahadir. He is or uh, he has this title, Tun. Tun is the uh, highest level of titles. And then we have this Tan Sri. You'll find that a lot of uh, very, very famous businessmen in Malaysia actually are bestowed with this title, Tan Sri. For example, the richest man in Malaysia, like our uh, Kuo Honen, yeah? he is actually a Tan Sri. All right. Another example, Tony Fernandez, yeah, the managing director of Air Asia, he is also conferred with the title of Tan Sri as well. Okay, and then we have the uh, Dato, and we have also the Dato Sri. These are all the uh, titles. So when these people are actually being conferred with such titles, so whenever we meet these people and when we address these people we actually must address these people by their titles, just like the, the, the British, they convert uh, Sir, then of course Knighthood. So they have to address these people with the title Sir. Okay? Now, uh, this Balayrong Sri also is the place where normally the oath taking and signature ceremony. So meaning to say, whenever we have our uh, prime ministers or any ministers taking their uh, taking their responsibility. So basically, they have to go through this uh, ceremony. And besides uh, this, uh, they are also the appointment ceremony at this uh, room as, as well. All right? And then we have also the uh, Conference of Rulers meeting room, which is actually a very, very uh, posh and very soothing uh, environment over here for the uh, sultans to have meeting over here. Then we have uh, those, uh, those uh, which are meant for banquet room uh, meeting, all various kinds of meeting. This is the uh, Sri Maharaja banquet room. Then we have the uh, Singhasana Kachil. Then we have the uh, Sri Nagara Hall. We have the uh, Santapan hall as well sorry this is Sri Nagara hall and then this is the santapan hall the santapan hall is actually santapan is meant for when our king is having a meal it is known as santapan this is the uh, a special words for those with uh, for with the uh, royalties right so basically uh, whenever our king wanted to organize any meals for the dignitaries, of course, this is the hall where, or basically the, the, the banquet where our, our king will have the meals together with the dignitaries. Now, Malaysia is actually has the world's most unique royal system. Why do I say so? Yeah? Okay, now, uh, actually, 
you find that in Malaysia, we actually has the most number of different kings within a short period. Can you imagine, right? Since 1957, that is Malaysia independence year until today, this year, 2021, we already have 16 kings altogether, right? So that's the reason why Malaysia is also the world's most most number of royalties in a country at any time. We have a lot of royalties as well. Why is it so? All right, Shali, I'm going to share with you. So basically, uh, we have this uh, conference of rulers. This conference of rulers actually uh, comprise of the uh, sultans in Malaysia, actually. All right. So basically, uh, the uh, conference of rulers uh, consists of consists of seven sultans, right? On the left-hand side, okay, the one that you see is actually the Kelantan Sultan. In Malaysia, we have 13 states, but then, uh, of course, not every state has the sultans, right? So basically, uh, we have seven sultans over here, and then the second one over here is actually the Chengganu Sultan. Yeah, he was, the, uh, he was also the previous king of Malaysia as well. Now, the third one is actually the uh, Kedah Sultan. And then we have the uh, Tengku Mahkota of uh, Pahang, or basically we, we call it the region of Pahang because his father is the uh, current king of Malaysia. Right? Then we have the uh, Perak Sultan, the Selangong Sultan, and the Johor Sultan. Then we have this one, Yam Tuan. For Negeri Sembilan State, we don't call Sultan, but we call the Yang Tuan. Then we have the last one over here, who is actually the uh, Raja. He is actually from Perlis, or basically the smaller state or the, the northmost, north, northern part of Peninsula Malaysia. Now, ladies and gentlemen, now, uh, our first king, or basically we call in Malay, Yang Di Pertuan Agong yeah, is actually uh, by the name of Tuan Ku Abdul Rahman. So coincidentally, please take note, yeah, our first prime minister is also by the name of Abdul Rahman. But then, yeah, he is also prince. So that's the reason why he's known as Tuan Ku Abdul Rahman. So please, ladies and gentlemen, please take note. First king is Tuanku Abdul Rahman. First prime minister is actually Tunku Abdul Rahman. Yeah? Now, because of our this uh, first king hails from Negeri Milan, and in Negeri Milan, the nine because Negeri Milan has nine chieftains. These nine chieftains they actually rotate themselves to be the Yam Tuan of the state. So. Because of our first king came from Negeri Milan, he has suggested that Malaysia also can have such a system for our royalties. So that's the reason why in Malaysia, these sultans are actually rotating themselves to be the king of Malaysia. Each of them can only be the king for five years. So basically, every king yeah, in Malaysia, they will have to go through this seven main, uh, seven main kings' will. So what is it? The will of the Malay kings and leaders, which were drafted on the 31st August 1957. This is the date where Malaysia, achieve, Malaysia achieved its Independence Day, right? Now, we bequeath to our descendants seven items in which if you are united and stand firm to them, you will enjoy peace and prosperous eternally. The following seven items are, first, we name and we shall address him the earth which you step and the sky which you shoulder, Federation of Malaya, now known as the Name Malaysia. Second, 
we announce that we shall save the followings other than mountains, lakes, and forests for our descendants. Malay reserve land till the ratio of 50% for which you may grab with other races. Third, to take care and protect the descendants and all the assets we have established the Malay Regiment soldiers to prevent turmoil in the country and threats from foreign countries. Fourth, we preserve and guarantee that the government and sovereignty of Malay Sultans that govern this country. Fifth, we announce that Islam is the religion of the Federation. Sixth, we set Malay language as the national language and we entrusted and gave the responsibility to the Malay Sultans to protect the Malays and special positions and also legitimate interests of other races. Later, it was added the special positions of the people in Sabah and Sarawak. Now, ladies and gentlemen, of course, our king has a special role, yeah? has his own role for our country. And of course, he is the head of Islam in Malaysia. Then, of course, because as mentioned, uh, Malaysia is a constitutional monarchy system. So basically, our king is also the head of the government, whereby he is the head of the executives, legislative, and also the judiciary system. Right? Then, uh, of course, over here for the uh, armed forces, he is the uh, main commander of the armed forces for the army, navy, and also the air force. And then in Malaysia, of course, uh, just now as mentioned, uh, we have a few states which do not have the sultans. So basically, they are the uh, Melaka, Pulau Pinang, Sabah, and Sarawak. So our king actually appoint the governments, uh, the state governors. Then, of course, uh, our king appoints our prime minister and also all the ministers in our country. Then it is the uh, king appoint the upper house, or basically in Malay we call it the Dewan Negara, and the lower house in Malay we call it the Dewan Rakyat. Then, uh, of course, our king also appoints all judges. Then, of course, uh, our king has also such a privilege where our king can request for a conference of rulers meeting whenever that uh, our king felt there is, a, there is, if let's say the Islam or the status of Malays are already in jeopardize, yeah. So basically, uh, our king can request for a conference of um, rulers meeting to decide on met, uh, important matters such as the Islam and so the Malay status. Then we have the uh, royal pardon. This is one good example whereby uh, our uh, Dato Sri Anwar Ibrahim He's a very famous uh, opposition leader in Malaysia. Uh, he was uh, in prison and our uh, king pardoned our, this uh, Dosri Anwar and that's the reason why uh, he is able you know, uh, to be again, yeah, to contest as a member of parliament in Malaysia over here. Then uh, we have also the uh, decision on dissolving the parliament. This is also one very important role of the king, whereby you know to decide whether to have the uh, elect general election or not. This actually our king holds such decision as well. Besides this, of course, uh, our our king also has a has the uh, power to decide on whether to set up royal inquiries. Now, uh, very important and uh, of course to the uh, uh, Malaysian citizens, whereby so that uh, to protect yeah, the Malaysian citizens. So our uh, king actually uh, can decide whether to set up the uh, royal inquiries or not. 
Yeah, and then of course the uh, uh, king also decide the uh, pro uh, proclamation of emergency. One very good example is whereby uh, during this uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, of course, yeah, uh, like just for example this year. Uh, due to the advice of our former Prime Minister uh, Tan Sri Muhyiddin, yeah. So basically, uh, this uh, uh, king, our king, has announced on the uh, emergency period from this year, uh, January right up to August. So it is the king's prerogative or the king's decision to whether decide on the uh, emergency period in Malaysia as well. All right. So besides uh, this role, okay, our king also sent uh, the laws which has been passed in our parliament. So basically, uh, it is our king who actually signed and also passed the law uh, which has been uh, assented in the parliament as well. All right. So uh, over here, uh, in Malaysia, actually, our king has the uh, power of immunity. Uh, basically, if uh, anyone who wants to really take the king to the court, they have to go through the uh, special courts. But then, uh, so far in Malaysia, uh, we don't have anyone who has all, uh, who who has actually, yeah, of course, uh, take the uh, sultans of the kings to the special courts. Besides this, of course, uh, one very unique part whereby uh, when the uh, king can't do, yeah, there are certain things where the, the kings can do. For example, the king actually can't hold any occupation position. Uh, now, uh, for example, as the uh, managing director or basically can't take part in any kind of business as well. Then, of course, uh, another very unique uh, and very unique uh, regulations is that the king cannot leave the country more than 15 days actually, right? Very, very unique, yeah? So another one is where the king can't perform the state sultan duty. Now, one very good example over here is where, you know, because uh, our current king uh, is from Pahang, so basically he is the uh, king now, his region, uh, that is the uh, Tengku Makota of Pahang, replaced him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is actually the uh, main entrance of the National Palace. So, on top of this uh, National Palace main gate, you will see this uh, card arts. Yeah, basically the uh, Quranic verses or the uh, Quranic Quranic uh, uh, handwritten. Uh, words over there it's actually a malay handicraft so what is that, that arabic words all about is actually the meaning of it is may i enter and exit with your approval bestow me the power to help others basically meaning to say uh, it it uh, really uh, bestow the king each and every time in and out of the in and out of the main palace is actually to help others to to provide us the safety, basically, this is what it means. All right. So, uh, on the uh, main gate, because uh, as tourists, we can only be at the main gate. So, this is basically what you will see, and then you can have a photography over here. You'll be able to see the uh, Royal Regiment soldier on both sides of the uh, main gate. This Royal uh, Regiment soldier is actually standing very firmly, and Usually, right, uh, every 60 minutes or every one hour, they actually uh, change uh, change the uh, soldier. You, you can see the whole ceremony over there if you are lucky at the right time as well. And then, while the uh, soldiers are standing, of course, ladies and gentlemen, please respect these royal regiment soldiers. Do not hug them or basically, you know, uh, do not touch them as well. This is a sign of respect to the soldiers. Now, besides the soldier, uh, on the also left and right hand side of the main gate, 
you find the uh, Royal Regiment soldier riding on the horse. You can also take photography of the uh, Royal Regiment as well, right? So basically, if you are taking photography with the uh, uh, soldier riding on a horse, please be very, very careful, yeah? Because uh, during my tour guiding days, I personally saw incidents where, you know, the uh, horse due to maybe uh, very, very hot weather, suddenly the horse goes crazy, you know, running about that kind of situation. And also there have been ex uh, incidents where the horse actually bite the tourists or also uh, has also beat the uh, tourist grass, you know, torn out everything. So please be very careful when you are actually um, having photography uh, together with a horse. That's the reason why please ensure that you stand in front of the yellow line. All right, ladies and gentlemen, of course, I truly hope that you have enjoyed my this uh, uh, short video. And of course, if you have any inquiries, if you have friends or relatives who are visiting Malaysia, or basically, if you have any questions, of course, I do hope you can provide some comments under the YouTube over here right and then of course you can always write to me at my email and also maybe uh, contact me through my whatsapp as well and if you like this video of course i hope you will subscribe to the uh, virtual venture vacation channel of course and also share this with your friends and relatives and over here i would like to say terima kasih Thank you very much and I see you again. Thank you.